everyone. My name is Karen Connolly. I'm with the Situate Select Board. I'm here today with Jim Boudreau, our town uh, administrator. We are not having Bill Burkhead on with us today because Jim just told me that schools are opening today for the kids. And so Bill is busy uh, running around town to say hello to everyone. So that's good news. Um, I have two announcements. One is that the Select Board and the um, advisory committee will be meeting this afternoon via Zoom at 5.30. This is a meeting in anticipation of town meeting, which is coming up on April 12th. Anyone is welcome to join us at this meeting. It's a formality prior to town meeting, uh, but we will be going over the warrant. So if you have any interest in that, uh, just go to the Situate Town website, click on the calendar, and you can get the agenda that will bring you to um, the meeting via Zoom. And and that's at 5.30 if I didn't say that already. And secondly, uh, the Easter Bunny couldn't make it this past Saturday, Sunday uh, because of the weather. Um, so apparently he's planning on coming back on the actual Easter Sunday, which is coming up on April 4th. He will be riding around Situate from 10 in the morning until about two. He starts uh, at the uh, public safety building and he does this very circuitous route around town uh, and he winds up in Hummer Rock at around two. So if you go to any of the main streets in town, sometime between 10 and two, I'm sure you'll be able to catch him. So uh, he does go to the West End and then he goes down to the Harbor, uh, Third Cliff, Second Cliff, Harbor, uh, Sand Hills. I don't know if he'll make it out to the lighthouse, but we'll see. Since it's a Sunday, maybe he can get down there. But and then he goes into Situate, uh, the center, and then back to North Situate, and then down to Hummerock. So you can imagine it's quite a long route, but uh, we hope he makes it and we look forward to seeing him. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Jim. Good morning. Good morning, Karen. Um, we'll start with our vaccine update again. We are in phase two, step three of the vaccination schedule. Residents 16 and over are residents in certain job categories can now get vaccinated along with everybody else who's already been approved. Uh, those workers include grocery and convenience store workers, restaurant, cafe workers, food pantry workers or volunteers, public works employees, court system workers, and funeral directors and workers, to name a few. You can go to mass.gov and get a complete list of who those workers are that can currently be vaccinated. Uh, currently, we are scheduled on April 5th, which is next Monday to go to age 55 and over and residents with one comorbidity. Uh, after that, on April 19th, it is scheduled to be open to anyone over the age of 16 in the Commonwealth. So uh, that's obviously depending upon vaccinations and how many vaccines we have, but we are moving through the vaccination process in the different phases. Uh, for the mass vaccination sites, go to vaccinesignup.mass.gov. You can sign up for a vaccine. They will then notify you when your appointment is and you have 24 hours to respond and then make that appointment. The CVSs, the Marshfield Fairs, the other local sites, they post vaccination availability when they get notified they're getting the vaccine. So you can go on and Marshfield will say they have not available and then a couple of hours later, they will have a thousand appointments available because they've been notified that they are receiving a vaccine shipment. So you just need to keep checking. Uh, again, state 211 for the state or the Council on Aging if you are having issues. Uh, the out-of-state travel order, as we mentioned last week, is now an out-of-state travel advisory. You are no longer required to quarantine when you come back, but it is still recommended that you quarantine. Uh, check with the local school department to find out whether they are following the state guidelines or whether they are still requiring uh, guidance of quarantine and a test before you come back to school. Uh, since last Monday, we had 38 cases. That's up significantly from the 22 of the previous week. It's a pretty big jump. However, our positivity rate went from 2.55 down to 2.32. So we get kind of mixed numbers there. Our 14 day positivity rate is down, but our one week number of cases is up significantly. Again, we seem to be in that zone where we could go either way. Uh, with the schools opening back up, uh, we need people to be more vigilant than ever. Please continue to wear your mask. Please continue to do things that you need to do to stay safe while we ramp up the vaccination. Uh, I should mention the state is expecting 40,000 Johnson & Johnson vaccines this week. Uh, so that's great. That's 40,000 shots, one shot, and you're out the door. It's not 40,000. Then we need another 40,000 later to give the second dose. So that's a good thing. But we need people to continue uh, to do what they're doing, to wear their masks, to stay safe, so that we can keep the schools open, we can keep 
businesses open, we can keep moving through the reopening process. Uh, students are back in class starting today. So we ask you to be careful around the elementary schools, particularly. You will see increased traffic around the schools. You will see more walkers. You will see more bikers. So please, especially around the elementary schools with little kids, uh, we ask you to be a little more vigilant, uh, go a little slower while the kids get back to school and get used to full complement back in school. I want to wish Superintendent Burkhead, his staff and the teachers, all the students and the parents, good luck. Uh, I know there's a lot of happy parents in town today as our kids are going back to school. My kids go back tomorrow. My wife is absolutely thrilled about it. So uh, I want to wish them all good luck. And again, we need to continue doing what we're doing to keep those numbers down and to keep the kids in school. We want people to be aware right now that there's a wind advisory in effect for today until four o'clock. Uh, winds between 20 to 30 miles an hour, gusts as high as 55 are expected. That could lead to some small trees, uh, limbs down and sporadic power outages. So if you're out and about today, just be careful, be aware of what's going on. Uh, and watch out for the high winds that are going on. Uh, Widow's Walk, again, is closed. It's scheduled to open April 1st. You can out and play some golf. Uh, we want you to play golf. We want you to be out. The golf course is going to be in good shape. Ian's doing a wonderful job. We are working on getting a food truck to be at the golf course this year uh, because right now the clubhouse is scheduled to be renovated. We will not have a clubhouse with food service. Probably won't be for April 1st. Probably be a little later in the year, but we will have something out there before too long so golfers can get a bite, something to drink and enjoy the golf course. Uh, Cedar Point, again, we talk about this every week. It is a big project. It is a very invasive project. It takes up a lot of space. If you do not need to be out to Cedar Point during the weekdays, stay out of Cedar Point, especially the walkers. Uh, that's some pretty big equipment. It's hard to get around. The streets are very narrow. It is scheduled to be completed sometime this spring before the start of the bathing season. So any help you can give us by avoiding that area during the construction will go a long way. Senior Center uh, is coming near to completion. We are working on the punch list now. The staff is in. We are expected to take that building and have occupancy for the 1st of April so people will be able to start using that building. They are working on their program schedule now based upon COVID guidelines. We hope to have that released very shortly. Landscaping is going on. Um, and it really is starting to come together. If you go up there now, you can see Kind of what that campus complex in the middle is going to look like with the landscape and it's going to be very nice when we get it done. A lot of flushing will continue this week. Uh, we are on First Parish from Beaver Dam to Stockbridge, James Way, Jackson Road, Washington, Bell Tower and Beach Tree. Uh, also smaller streets in those areas will be done. We are at uh, 2.25 inches plus at the reservoir spilling over so that's good the reservoir is full. Our average usage for the last seven days was 1.26 million gallons a day, which is a little high, so we want you to keep continuing continue to conserve water. And we've received three quarters of inches of rain at the treatment plant as of yesterday. So the, the reservoir is full, that's good, but we need you to start conserving water early so that stays full for the coming summer and we don't have the drought issues that we had last week. Uh, Karen's already mentioned the meeting tonight, so that is what I have for today. Very good, Jim. Thanks a lot, and I hope everyone stays safe. And as Jim mentioned, please continue to be vigilant. We are not out of the woods yet. Uh, everyone is getting very optimistic, which is great, but we can't let our guards down. So with that, I hope everyone has a wonderful week, and we'll see you next Monday.